Thanks, Arpit, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. I'm Arash, and I'll be talking about Causal Sim, a causal framework for unbiased trace driven simulation. This is joint work with Abdullah, Puya, Anish, Mohammed, and Devavra. Trace-driven simulation is a widely used method for evaluating new ideas in systems, which uses traces to capture the real behavior of parts of the system without going through the complexity of simulating all the system components. But the problem is that it's often not very accurate. The issue of bias in outcomes of trace-driven simulation has been observed in prior work, and we also observe it in our experiments. So I hope that by the end of this talk, you learn about a key source of bias in trace-driven simulation and also how to remove it for doing unbiased trace-driven simulation. When we do trace-driven simulation, we focus on simulating one or a few components of interest where we want to experiment with an intervention, like a new design or a new algorithm, and to take into account the effect of other components which we do not simulate we observe their real behavior, their real runtime, and collect a trace which is supposed to capture their behavior. And in simulation time, we just replay this trace while simulating the component of interest with the proposed interventions. The underlying assumption we make when we replay the trace is that this trace is exogenous, which means that Interventions we're simulating do not affect the trace that we're replaying. Exogenous trace assumption does not hold in many real-world traces, which can hurt accuracy and lead to completely wrong conclusions, as I'll show you with an example. So to make things more concrete, I'm going to use adaptive bitrate video streaming, or ABR, as the running example throughout the rest of the talk. And this slide is going to be a brief intro on this system. When you go on a website like YouTube to watch video, the way that it works is that this video is divided into many video chunks, each of which is encoded into a finite set of bit rates and stored on a video server. And there is an ABR algorithm sitting on your video client, which for each video chunk decides on a bit rate to request from the server, and the server responds with the video content. The goal of this ABR algorithm, roughly speaking, is to pick high bit rates so that you can watch high quality video, but at the same time, keep up with the conditions of your network to avoid buffer depletion and stall events, as we're seeing in this slide. Trace driven simulation has been used many times in this problem, where we simulate the video client and use traces to model the underlying network without simulating it. Intervention that we're interested in is a new ABR algorithm and a typical trace that we collect from real-world video streaming sessions and then replay in simulation time as a chief throughput. To simulate the video client, a common way is to use expert knowledge of the system to model the dynamics of playback buffer level, which is actually very simple. Buffer level after download of each chunk is going to be buffer level before this download minus the time it took for the download to happen plus the amount of video that's, that this newly downloaded chunk adds to the playback buffer. And download time is nothing but the chunk size chosen by this new ABR algorithm we're simulating divided by the achieved throughput that we just read off the trace that we're replaying. The simple model has been used in many prior works such as MPC and PenC. To give you more insight, I'm going to use data from Puffer dataset to do some analysis. Puffer is a real-world video streaming system deployed at Stanford, which does a continual randomized control trial over ABR algorithms, which means that whenever a user logs in to the system to watch free TV, an ABR algorithm is picked completely at random and assigned to this user so that all ABR algorithms experience the same distribution of network conditions, and then we can compare them fairly with each other. This part of the data set that I'm using contains five ABR algorithms and more than three years' worth of streamed video. And the simulation task that I'm going to focus on is to use 
traces for all but one of these ABR algorithms to simulate this held out algorithm on the same set of network paths. Here's how a typical trajectory looks like in this data set. It's a time series of bit rates, achieved throughput, and playback buffer. And this, in this example, this trace was collected using BBA, which we refer to as the source algorithm. And what we want to do is to simulate what would have happened to this trajectory had we used BOLA1, which we refer to as a target algorithm, under the exact same network conditions. This target algorithm may pick a different bitrate from the very first chunk, and we also want to simulate the question marks throughout the rest of the trajectory. So let's see how accurate standard trace-driven simulation is. In this plot, the x-axis is showing the ratio of watch time spent stalling, so lower is better. The y-axis is showing average SSIM, which is a perceptual quality metric for video, so higher is better. In each triangle, is showing the simulated metrics for an ABR algorithm in this data set. So for example, the orange triangle, which represents BOLA1, uh, to calculate that, we use all the traces except for those collected with BOLA1 to simulate BOLA1 with experts. And circles are showing the ground truth data. So for example, the orange circle, which again represents BOLA1, is calculated using trajectories that were collected using BOLA1. Note that circles and triangles are, collected, are calculated using different traces. And the reason we can still compare them with each other is that this data is coming from a randomized control trial, and the distribution of network conditions should be the same in these traces. So as you can see, the performance of expert sim, the standard trace driven simulator, is not so good. And the reason for that is this exogenous trace assumption does not hold in the system. In fact, the higher the bitrate chosen by the ABR algorithm, the higher throughput you're going to achieve, which is generally because the underlying network is more efficient for larger bitrates. This has been observed in prior work. And we can also observe it in the puffer data. So here I'm plotting the distribution of achieved throughput for two different ABR algorithms. And as you can see, they don't match. So by now you know about exogenous trace assumption as a key source of bias in trace-driven simulation. You also uh, know, sorry, and the uh, natural thing to do next is to see if we can remove this source of bias for doing unbiased simulation. To do that, we have to explicitly model the fact that achieved throughput at time step t, m of t, is a function of both the chosen bitrate and also the latent network conditions u. This can be things like the bottleneck link bandwidth or the number of flows that you're competing with. The challenge with this model is that both u and f are unknown. If we knew f and if we knew u, what we could have done for simulating a new algorithm was to just plug in the bitrate chosen by this new algorithm we're simulating and see how it would have affected the achieved throughput, m tilde t. So that is easy, but still we have to learn f and estimate u. So let's give it a try. I'm going to use a neural network that I, that I call the latent factor extractor. I give it as input the source bitrate and the source throughput and ask it to extract the latent network conditions from these inputs. But that's not going to happen just because I named it so. I have to define a proper loss function and train this model. Defining a loss function is challenging for this model because its output is not observed. We don't observe u. So a proposal is to use a property of u, which is that it should be informative for trace reconstruction or throughput reconstruction. To do that, I am going to add another neural network that I call a trace generator, which takes as input the extracted latent, along with the source bitrate, and tries to predict the source throughput. So I train these two neural networks together with the goal of fitting the observed data. This ensures that the extracted latent is informative enough for trace reconstruction. But is that enough? Does this mean that 
U hat, the extracted latent, is going to converge to the ground truth U. Unfortunately, this is not the case. This problem is still underspecified. In fact, there is a degenerate solution where both neural networks can learn a very simple identity mapping just to copy M from their input to their output. And this is going to achieve 100% accuracy for fitting the observed data. But in simulation time, when we want to change the input of the trace generator from source bitrate A to target bitrate A tilde, it's still going to output M, which means that it has not learned the effect of bitrate on throughput. So it seems like this approach is hopeless, but we haven't used all the information we have about this problem yet. We know that this puffer data is coming from a randomized control trial, which means it satisfies the RCT property, which is distribution of latent network conditions is the same in trajectories assigned to different algorithms. In other words, latent network condition is independent of the source algorithm which means that latent network condition does not give any information about the source algorithm. So if I give the latent network condition U as an input to a neural network that I call the policy discriminator or the algorithm discriminator and ask it to predict the source algorithm from this latent, it shouldn't be able to do anything better than random guessing. And that is the insight that I am going to use to further constrain this training process. So I want to extract latents that are informative for trace reconstruction, so the trace generator can use them for fitting the observed data. But at the same time, I want those latents to fool the discriminator, to ensure that they have the same distribution across different algorithms. This eliminates that degenerate solution that I talked about. Remember that we saw a plot that showed that distribution of achieved throughput is different for ABR algorithms. But not just that. Surprisingly, we have a theorem in the paper that states that ensuring the RCT property is sufficient for estimating the counterfactual trace under a set of conditions, which are if this function f is invertible for each value of u, if its matrix representation is low rank, which intuitively means that this function f should be nice and structured, and also if we have access to traces that are collected using sufficient number of diverse algorithms. So let's step back for a second, just to make sure that I deliver on the initial process, uh, promise I made on the first slide. We learned about exogenous trace assumption as a key source of bias in trace-driven simulation. We also learned about the practical algorithm for removing this bias and doing unbiased trace-driven simulation. We refer to this algorithm as causal sim, and what it does essentially is to take data from a randomized control trial and expand the utility of this initial RCT by which I mean that instead of just using that initial RCT to compare a few algorithms that were involved in it, you can now use this data to train a model which can simulate a wide range of new algorithms. So this is the same plot that we saw for performance of expert sim. Once we use causal sim to do these simulations, stars are what we get. And as you can see, they're much closer to the ground truth points. And once we have an accurate simulator, we can use it for many interesting downstream tasks, such as policy optimization. And that's what I'm going to do next. So here, we're, say, we're seeing two ABR algorithms, BBA and BOLA, both of which have some hyperparameters, some tuning knobs. And I'm going to ask if we can use causal sim to improve their performance by tuning their hyperparameters. To do so, I'm going to use Bayesian optimization in both simulators, causal sim and expert sim. And the orange curves are showing the Pareto frontiers achieved by BOLA1, whereas green curves are showing the Pareto frontiers achieved by BBA. As you can see on the left-hand side, causal sim is telling us that BOLA is a better algorithm than BBA, whereas on the right-hand side, 
Expert Sim is telling us the exact opposite. So the question is, which one is correct? To get to the bottom of this, we picked a parameter for BOLA on its Pareto curve, which Causal Sim predicts is going to stall much less than the BBA version deployed in Puffer, but for the same parameter, Expert Sim predicts the opposite, that it's going to stall more than BBA deployed in Puffer. And we asked the Puffer team to deploy this parameter in their real-world video streaming system. And after five months of real data collection, this is the result that we get. The purple point is showing the performance of the BOLA version optimized with Causal Sim. And as you can see, it's stalling much less than the original BBA version, and at the same time achieving the about the same video quality. Remember that this result was impossible according to expert sim simulation results. And this is what I mean by bias in trace driven simulation. I also want to thank the Puffer team for all the help they did with these experiments. I'm very grateful for that. So I talked about causal sim mostly in the context of ABR as an example. But we have a general causal formulation of this problem in the paper that I encourage you to check out, especially if you're interested in applying it to other problems. We believe that causal sim and this methodology is widely applicable to broadly two range of problems. Number one are systems where we are already using trace driven simulation, such as ABR. Using causal sim in these systems can make simulation results more accurate, as we saw in this presentation. The second uh, group of systems are those where we, are, we have not used trace driven simulation yet because we have not been able to define even an approximately exogenous trace to collect and then replay in simulation time. Causal sim can unlock the application of trace driven simulation in these group of systems and we have a simple example of it in the paper. That's all I have, and I'll stop here.